Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you hungry for the word? Are you hungry for the word? Hallelujah. I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter 36. Sweet spirit, take over this place. Okay, book of Psalms. Holy Spirit, you are the hand of God, and I become the glove on your hand. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, book of Psalms, chapter... 36 from verse 7 to 9. I want us to read it together. The book of Psalms, chapter 36, from verse 7 to 9. Are you ready, church? Let's read. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God! Mm -mm -mm. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They, are abund they shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. And thou shalt make them drink of the liver of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. And thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. I'm going to be sharing with you today on the Rava dimension. Somebody say Rava. R-A-V-A-H. The Rava dimension. The scriptures tell us that they shall be. That is the children of men who put their trust in the loving kindness of God. Oh, what a word. Love and kindness. To love is a great word. To be kind is a great word as well. But I understand how difficult it was for the translators to describe the word Hasid. Because the word translated love and kindness is the Hebrew word Hasid. It's a word so strong, it means I am boiling to love you, Jesus. I am boiling to do good to you. I am boiling to care for you. It's a love that's so strong, it will burn a hole in you. That's the love that God has. So the word love was too weak to describe it. So they had to make a word called loving kindness. To describe, it was the love that God had that he sent his only begotten son. It's a love because it's a love that longs to share who they are with you, expecting nothing in return. <laughs> oh, glory be to God, what a love. What a love, what a love, what a love. And there is a set of people on the earth who have learned to trust not in the arm of flesh. They've learned not to trust in their ability to manipulate. They have learned not to trust in their background. They have learned to trust who? in the Hasid of God. They have learned to trust in the loving kindness of God, they have discovered 
that there is a God in heaven and he has a seed for me. His heart is burning to be good to me. For the Lord is good. Hallelujah. And his mercy endured forever. The Lord is gracious to all. The word gracious means disposed to show favors. So the Lord is disposed. He has a heart to show you favors. The Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies extend over all his works. That's Psalm 145. Oh, I have come to tell you, brethren, that the Hasid of God, the loving kindness of God, is what pursued you. It's a love that pursues. It's a love that doesn't take no for an answer. It's a love that you chase you down. You will be in the middle of your sin, and yet Hasid is there. Oh, are you hearing what I'm saying? You be in the middle of your bondage, yet her seed is there. That's why you can make your bed in a living hell on earth, yet her seed will be there. I remember the story of Kent Maddox, that wonderful teacher of the word, who was an associate to Pastor Benny Hinn, and he shared on how her seed changed him. He shared on how the loving kindness of God changed him. He was a druggie. And his girlfriend was not just a prostitute. She owned a brothel. So the mother, so she was a prostitution mama. So she was worse than a prostitute. Because she recruited prostitutes and trained prostitutes. So she was a master prostitute. She was a prostitute instructor. So she was not, let's just describe, so she was not just, now the Bible describes that there's a spirit called the spirit of Hodom. The spirit of Hodom. So the spirit of Hodom is what turns women into prostitutes. And the, and the word whore means to engage in transactional sex. So you have sex because there's a what? Transaction. There's a financial transaction. It's it's so so. So that's the spirit of whoredom. A homemonger is somebody is a man who actually connects and likes working, likes having ladies in which he has a in which he pays for sex, either paying paying like here's the three hundred dollars and, and and let's do it, or have sex and I'll look after you. You understand that? So it, 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 it's either direct or it's a look after you. And, 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 you know, and, and, and you know that you would not have that if that was not in place. I understand what I'm saying. Now you've got to understand this. Hallelujah. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Now you've got to understand that uh, his girlfriend was not just a whore. She took women and girls who were not whores, who didn't have a spirit of whoredom on them, and she would recruit them. She would do what? Recruit them. And she would train them. And she would break them into whoredom. And so they can work in her brothel. And he was a drug dealer. And one day, he was in the crack house, smoking crack, cocaine. And while he was smoking cocaine, a revelation hit him. The Spirit of God hit him in the crack house. And he told his friend, huh, I believe that I'm going to be a preacher. When he told his friend that, the friend's crack pot fell down. Because he said, boy, this is some really strong crack you're smoking. I mean, you're talking about preaching and we're in a crack house smoking. Now, I believe it was on the same day or right about the same time. His girlfriend, the whole instructor, the whole recruiter, was actually leaving the brothel to go home. On her way, 
driving the car. She had a vision. Do you imagine the whole, the whole instructor, the whole recruiter had a vision after leaving the brothel. She was in fasting. She was in praying. But she had a vision. And when she had a vision, she saw C and the drug dealer in Africa preaching in a crusade. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That is called what? Hasid. It's called what? Loving kindness. So the loving kindness of God was pursuing her. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. That's why the Bible says that you should fear God and you should, you should know God's love and know God's terror. Like I would tell my children, I said, who do you want, daddy or father? Daddy can jump with you, run together, but father will apply the board of education to the seat of learning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One of my daughters did something in school. And I tell you, I applied the board of education to the seat of learning. And then after applying the board of education to the seat of learning, I actually, we, we actually negotiated because of the what she did. What had disciplined me because I... I, when I discipline my children, I discipline them like how my father used to discipline me with no anger. I don't discipline my children with effort anger. So I don't, there's no anger when I'm disciplining you. Me and you will sit down, we discuss what you've done. They will discuss what you think your punishment should be. So you tell me what your punishment should be, then I tell you if it's right or wrong. So I tell you for this punishment, you should get 12 strokes. No, daddy, I think I should get six. I said, no, for that one, you know, it's because the negotiations makes it sweet, it makes the punishment go deeper. You understand that? So you are mentally, because if I beat you in anger, you feel my anger, and it would abort the punishment. Because I want it to be discipline. I don't want to punish you, I want to discipline you, bring you into order. An alignment. So we discussed it. So we discussed it. So I had said, listen, I'm going to give you, based on this, and I, 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 I would go, and I would go choose my canes. I would walk. I choose my canes. I would go find the right type of tree, cut it and peel it, and I put it there. I put it there. I said, any child that wants this, you know what to do to get it. If you don't want it, leave it. You can experience who? Daddy. Because why do I act like that? Because I learned from the Bible that you need to represent God well. So there is daddy and there's father. So one of them had misbehaved in school. Was it just misbehaved in school? She misbehaved in school, private school. So you're paying for her to go misbehave? <laughs> St. Ushelas had called me with, <laughs> I mean, the head mistress had called me with <laughs> stuff that <laughs> one of them had done. I said, okay, bless the Lord. So we, I mean, so we talked about it. And she, she said, she said that, daddy, the, the level of caning I had to give her was too high. So I said, okay, where, where to do that? We're going to balance it. What is the balance? She said, Daddy, I will do pumping. Because there's another exercise. Another thing we have is called pumping. That's an African type of discipline. We have very inventive ways in Sierra Leone to discipline kids. So pumping is you do this. And you go down like this. Four, two. Okay, so you do that. And when you're going up and down, you're saying, I must not feel. I must not. I must not. So it helps you. It's a very, very good for your body. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So whatever, <laughs> whatever you need to address while you're pumping, you actually say it. And then if you miss a pump, so you stand with a cane by the side. 
down properly. Because if you don't go down properly, it's not counted. So you can go half as much as you want. It's not counted. You have to go down. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Coating the appropriate thing. So they said, Daddy, I prefer to do pumping. I said, okay. You're going to have to do 300 pumps. She said, okay, can I do half today, half tomorrow? That's fine. After the pumpings was done, after we did the whole pumping regiment, she said that even when she went to school, they told her that her legs had changed. <laughs> her legs. Her legs, her legs, her legs were defined. <laughs> so what I'm telling you is this. Okay? Your heavenly father, right? He has discipline and he has so you can experience his love side or you can experience what his what his discipline side now to to understand that when to understand you need to study the bible to understand god when moses sister was racist because racism is a demon when the demon of racism entered her and she was upset with Moses for marrying that black woman. And she made up a whole storm. And she said, is it only Moses who hears from God? Moses didn't say anything. God called them all to the tabernacle. When God called them all to the tabernacle, God asked her, you, when I give you a vision and a dream, I give you in a the multitude that you have to interpret. When I speak to Moses, I come physically and talk to him. Do you not understand that Moses is higher than you? How dare you speak like that to Moses? And when he said that, the Bible says the presence of the Lord was removed. And when it was removed, Miriam had become a leper. God said, why did she become a leper? Because he said, you want to be white. Let's make you whiter than snow now. Leprosy is the most devastating whiteness. She was leprous from up to bottom. Moses said, oh my God, Heavenly Father, why did you do that? God told her, if a child does this type of foolishness to her father, won't her father spit on her face and slap it? So God said, I will slap her with leprosy and she will be white for seven days then I will change her back. So she understands what is this to be white. Since she wants to be white, let's make her white. So the heavenly father, he has a side of him. He has inventive disciplines. <laughs> he will discipline you in a way, boy. <laughs> you, I mean, you, <laughs> you know, he has inventive, inventive ways of correcting you. Shakata. <laughs> so you don't want that side. You want to be on the loving kindness side. So there's a people who understand the loving kindness of God. And he says, the Bible says, now he says, they shall be abundantly satisfied. The word abundantly satisfied is the ball, is the word rava. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. That means God is saying that I am going to so bless them that they're going to be so blessed, they say, Lord, this is enough. I've had enough. So the Rava dimension is when you tell God, please stop. This is too much financial blessing. This is too much peace. This is too much anointing. My Lord, I've had enough. This is just too much. It says, they shall be abundantly satisfied. By what? The word says there, the fatness of thy house. That means, by the fatness, you need to understand what the fatness of thy house. You know, when we were growing up, we had, I mean, like, I, I've always been somebody who liked meat. And if you have guests coming around, uh, you... You don't take the large ones. You take the small ones. Understand that? 
So when he says the fatness of thy house, he's saying like the, the, the top, the, the, the best of God's house. The best. So God says, I will give these people the best and they shall be abundantly satisfied with the best. Hallelujah. That's the word Rava. Somebody say Rava. So the Lord spoke to me. He says, I want you to tell my people that there's a dimension called Rava. Because they don't know that there's a place in me where I can so bless you that you tell me, stop. <laughs> oh, glory. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm not there yet, but I'm going for that. So there's a place where you tell me, Lord, this piece is too much. Lord, how, how, how much money can you give me now? Lord, when will you do this money? You're confusing me with this money. Lord, wait, how... I mean, how many dresses are you going to bless me with? How many shoes? How many cars? How many houses? God, will you stop giving me a house? This is too much. Come on, God. Stop it. How, I mean, come on. Can you see how many places can I live? So God wants, he gets, God wants to bring you to a place where you experience rava. Where you say, you are too good. Your goodness is too much for me. Stop this goodness. Can we negotiate? Don't bless me for another month. Bl bless me six months time. Because what you've done is too much. Can you hold it on? Oh, hallelujah. Now, there's a people who are searching to be blessed. And then there's a people who have rava. <laughs> there's a people who have what? Rava. Oh, hallelujah. Who wants some rava? Now, to explain to you the word Rava, the word Rava is also a word that's used, hallelujah, in the marriage bed. In fact, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 6, he says, speaking to the husband, he says, let thy breast, let her breast Rava you at all times. That means, so he's telling the husband that you should be so Rava, that you have no appetite for nothing else because you have been thoroughly been ravad. I understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Bless the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is nothing else. That is the word. So, Rava is a very strong word. Rava. Shekata Babasai. Who? Somebody is going to have an appetite to get into the dimension in which God blesses you. He blesses you so much. He adds so much to you. And here's the thing. The Bible says, the blessing of the Lord make it rich and add it what? No sorrow. I remember... One of, you know, you learn from life. I've been in the ministry for a lot of years. And there are people that you can't tell that even though you're counseling them, God is teaching you through them. And you learn just as much from them as they learn from you. This was one instance. There's this lady. She was married to one of the most richest men in the country. One of the most influential men in the country. Now, I've pastored in many parts of the world, so, so you can't tell what country. And she came to me. I mean, her, and she drove to church in her BMW convertible. Understand that? But she was stressed. Ah, yeah, yeah. She was stressed beyond stressed. She had money, she had influence, and she had looks. This lady was good looking understand me when she, i mean you can imagine her driving in that convertible and she was a fashionista's fashionista then she also had a dress shop so when a fashionista has a beauty shop it is deadly then she's married to one of the most wealthy men in the country and then she is very influential, and then she 
and the head of the country are like this. The woman is what? Connected. But the lady, with all that she had, she had money with sorrow. Because she was telling me she was so fed up that she needed deliverance because she, she has been planning how to kill the husband. <laughs> and when she started to speak about the husband, the hatred in her, the hatred, and she was planning, she said, I used to work in pharmacy, so Bishop, I can kill him and nobody will know. I'll kill him slowly with the food. Slowly. I'll put this thing in him, there's these chemicals, and he will die. Even the autopsy will not reveal it. That's, I mean, she's so vexed that she's actually telling me, the bishop, her murder plan. But on the outside, she, she is the picture of sophistication. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? She had house, money, wealth, Influence, connection with what? Sorrow. Sorrow. With sorrow. Lakatabasha. So Bible says, the blessing of the Lord make it rich and addeth no sorrow. Jesus. Somebody say what? No sorrow. So she had got what people are looking for in life, but she got it with what? Sorrow. Quite a journey with her. Ma, 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 na, she. But Rava has no sorrow. I said, what? Rava has no sorrow. Now, how does a person access Rava? Who wants to know how to access Rava? It says, thou shalt be abundantly satisfied. You see, the reason why I use these words, the reason why God has spoken to me to use these words, is that one Hebrew word, Rava, can, be, can only be explained with three English words. They shall be what? Abundantly satisfied. <laughs> that, that means... Satisfied is not enough. To say, I was satisfied is not enough. Abundantly. They shall be what? Abundantly. That means you're satisfied until you're satisfied is satisfied. And you are so satisfied that you don't want to be satisfied anymore. Because you're too satisfied with the satisfied. <laughs> and if you get satisfied anymore, it would, you'll be unsatisfied with the satisfied. Because it is too satisfied. <laughs> Are you with me? It's like, have you ever, I mean, I, mean like I experienced that because I knew I was going to be fasting. I mean, I was satisfied with my satisfied. I mean, I ate. I mean, I ate. I ate, boy. I mean, hallelujah. I mean, <laughs> in fact, there's one day for my dessert, no, for my dinner, I ate about half a cake. And then I went, because, because I wanted it to be really good. I drove to Shefet, got some ice cream, and pasted it on top of the cake. So I ate enough that it would be a meal. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I said, well, no problem. I'm going to be fasting. <laughs> Are you with me? <laughs> so let me tell you. After I ate like that, I see the food... <laughs> <laughs> I'm abundantly satisfied. <laughs> I don't want anything more. I'm like, no boy, my stomach <laughs> cannot take anything more. <laughs> Are you with me? That is, I'm what? Abundantly satisfied. So that is what the word Rava means. Because I have such goodness for you in your life. You look at your marriage, your children. You look at what's happening in your finances, your relationship, your destiny. And it, it, it will be so good, you will experience Rava. Ha, yeah, yeah. Somebody say, I want Rava. Now, it says, for them to get Rava, he says, 
thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. So, you drink until you get to Rava. <laughs> he says, thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. So, Rava is not something, it's something you drink yourself to. Are you with me? It's something you do what? Drink yourself too. And as I shared with the what in church, the word drink is the word shaka. Which means to drink until you get drunk. Shaka means today you actually go to the party and you actually, you, you actually have a designated driver because you know you ain't going to drive. So if you go to the party and you appoint a designated driver, that means you went with intention <laughs> to, get, to get drunk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that is shaka. That is, that is, you say, listen man, I am going to drink from God. Now, what do you mean drink from the river of thy pleasures? Hallelujah. Now, hallelujah. Let's tie it with what God's teaching us. How many graces are there? How many graces? Four. So, you drink from the river of Sozo. <laughs> Sozo is what? To save, to deliver. So some people, they drink from the river of Sozo and they have, they drink enough Sozo to not go to hell. But they don't drink enough Sozo to get rid of the generational curse. They don't, get, they don't drink of the sozo to, to get rid of the devils. They don't get rid of the sozo. So, it's, you see, you drink. It's based on how much you drink. So some people drink enough sozo to get healed. But they don't get drink enough sozo to get delivered from poverty. Are you with me? So, it depends on how much you drink. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is equal opportunity. He has what's called an equal opportunity system. In England, we say, he is an equal opportunity employer. Equal opportunity system. So, there's an equal opportunity. It's based on your drinking. Now, some people are not sure how good God is. It's why this scripture begins with saying, Oh, how excellent is thy loving kindness. And the children of men put their trust in the shadow of your wings. Because if you don't understand how good God is and how he wants to give you Rava you will not do what? Shaka hey you see are you with me? have I lost you? Have you got, if you don't know how good God is how wonderful because see there are people who don't know if they want to let go you understand that? You're thinking, uh, if I let go, if I let go, it's like, I mean, I was very mischievous when I was young, and I loved the game. I loved to watch people standing by the pool. So we used to, in Sierra Leone, we used to go to this very nice country club. And you used to have the kids go there, and they stand by the pool, you know, it's not heated water. It's salt water coming from the beach. And it's like cool. And I just used to sit behind the chairs or lie down like I am sleeping. And I'm watching them. And they're thinking, should I go in? Should not. And I would just go behind them and go, what? Push in. Boom. That used to be one of my favorite pastimes. 
pushing people into the water. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. <laughs> okay. So, what was interesting is this. They were thinking, do I want this water? Do I not want this water? Some of them would put their foot inside the water. They would actually sit down, put their foot inside the water. Do I want to go in? Do I not want to go in? Do I want to go in? Do I want to go in? So what happens with people, because they don't know how sweet God is. Ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they don't know how loving kindness God is, they hold back. Jesus. They actually, see, they hold back instead of going full. Are you with me? But then there are some friends of mine, whenever they're going to the pool, they actually begin running from the uh, changing room. They just come like this. Ooh, ah, inside, boom. Because they're, they're already, they have some others. Sit down, think, meditate, contemplate, if they're going to go inside. And even when they go inside, they go inside to the shallow end, so it comes up here. Before it comes up here, no, 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 no. So this is a very powerful truth. Do you know and understand how good God is? What he has for you. So you can let go. Because so, if you let go, you can do what? Shaka. You can drink and he shall cause you to be what? Abundantly satisfied. Some of you are not sure if God can satisfy you. <laughs> oh, are you with me? You're not sure. Today, when I asked him what to minister, he said, just tell the people that there's a dimension in me called Rava where they will be abundantly satisfied until there's nothing more. They say, God, stop answering. Stop. Stop this thing. This is too much. How much honor can you give one person? Hey, would you stop honoring me, God? It's getting too much now. Hallelujah. Can you stop making my life so sweet? It's like, if you make it so sweet, I'll just die and go to heaven. I thought you were supposed to reserve something for heaven. Heaven is supposed to be an upgrade. How come life is so sweet? If life is so sweet, I may not want to go to heaven anymore. Because it seems that we experience heaven now. <laughs> Somebody say, that is my portion. That is available to every person. Based on how much you're willing to drink. That's the end of my message. That's all God told me to say. Let them know that there is a dimension in me called Rava. Where they will tell me, stop. God, it is too much. What am I going to do with all this blessing? And the Lord has spoke something to me. He said, he said, tell them this because some of them can identify with this. Has God ever touched any one of you at home or in the service and you, 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 you actually start to tell God, God, take it easy. <laughs> Has God ever touched you? And you think, hey, Lord, this power is too much. This anointing is too much. Because God can touch you. And you're like, God, 
please take it easy. Hey, you kill me. I know I said, touch me. But what? Do you want to kill me? Because one thing that we said about God, he is excessive. See. Oh, hallelujah. God is what? Excessive. He is, he has an excessive personality. He does everything in what? Excess. Too much water. Too many stars. Too many galaxies. Everything is too much. He does nothing small. He's like, too much. So when he comes into a person's life and he has his way, he will give them what? Too much. That's why there is a name of God called El Shaddai. It, it literally means, in the literal Hebrew, it actually means the God of too much. That's what it means. So wherever you see in the Bible, in the Old Testament, Almighty is the word El Shaddai. Some say the God of more than enough. But it's the literal Hebrew says the God of too much. Let's stand up. Jesus. Who I feel the anointing here. Shaka Tabasan. Woo! Your heavenly father has goodness for you. He is an equal opportunity provider. He, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. People love to put the responsibility all on God. Any faith that puts all the responsibility of God is irresponsible. God says, I shall abundantly satisfy you. I shall give you a river, but I can't drink for you. You must do what? Drink for yourself. You must drink for yourself. Bless the Lord. That reminds me, my wife refused to share her twist with me. I'm just teasing. And so when I said, honey, because you're so loving, kind, could you share a twist with me? She says, this is what I'm going to do. I am, I am going to, when I drink it, as I drink it in you gulp. What kind of, I mean, could you imagine that? That's what she said to me for the last twist. I told her, honey, you know I'm going to be fasting. Can I just drink this twist before my fast? She said, really, that's very good, for, very good of you. She says, yes, you can drink it. But right now, there's gulp. Could you imagine that? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez, my Lord. Ah, yeah, yeah. Now, God Almighty, God Almighty will never, catch this, he will never say, I drink, you gulp. No, he will always say, he will always make, no, 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 get a cut of say. No, no. <laughs> he will say, if you want to drink, right? Mm -hmm. He will always make sure you are responsible for what? Drinking. You're drinking. Now, a lot of people say, God, I would like you to drink for me, but I get the benefit of the drinking. No, you drink. Because God is equal opportunity. So you get how much you want. But you can drink up to Rava. For me, I have not had Rava yet. So you can drink Sozo until there's nothing left to Sozo. <laughs> there's nothing left in your life to save. Then you can drink Egloji. And you are in the assignment God has called you to do, and there's nothing left. Then you can drink some charismata, whoo, and the gifts are flowing. And then you can get to Shen. And you can drink Shen, and drink some Shen, and drink some Shen, and drink favor, favor, 
things happening for you, things moving, and you say, God, stop. It is too fast. Slow down. Come on. Stop. In the name of Jesus, I command, shed anointing, stop. I decree right now, let every shed anointing stop in my life now. I've had too much shed for the year. It's over. My God, this is too much for me. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. That is where he wants to take you. Are you with me? Everybody, don't, see, don't think. See, you need to get it here about God. When I realized this about God, it changed my approach to him. When I realized it was how much I could drink, ah, then I said, well, well, well. You see me? I'll drink. Because I, I remember my father made a mistake one day. I was a young boy, teenager, about 14, 15. He put me in charge of the drinks for party. I have an excessive personality. So instead of just drinking one drink, Every single drink there I drank. The hangover I had, geez, was beyond measure. Every vodka I drank. Every, I mean, every, every single thing. I drank every single drink in abundance. Because I did not know you're not supposed to mix drinks. Except, oh Lord, I drank everything. If it's there, I drank beer. I drank Guinness. Every type of beer I drank it. I was like, because I was like, boy, I need to, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had an excessive personality. My mom would tell me, one thing about you, you don't know how to do things in moderation. Moderation, son, moderation. You don't do things in moderation. I didn't, I didn't understand moderation. <laughs> Even when I'm fighting, I would want to beat somebody up after I beat them. I want to take my belt and whip them like their mama never whipped them. See, that's excessive. If you beat somebody, beat them. But why do you want to beat them when they're on the floor, you take your belt and you flog them? See, that is too much. I was very excessive. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you with me? Because I wanted when I beat you to, to actually know that I really beat you. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Hi. That is why I wanted to do. I wanted to do no. Hallelujah. But I turned my excessive nature for God. With me? You can as well. Right now, there's an anointing here. You can drink from the river of God's pleasure. Jesus. Who? That river is here. I said that river is here. Shakata Babara. That river is here. Lift your hands up. Man, dere, kurosh, That river is here. You can drink from the river of prosperity and oil. You can drink from the river. And with me, God has anointed me to take the river of the oil of joy, <laughs> the river of divine pleasures. To the people of my generation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As a sign. And if you need a drink today, you can drink. In the name of Jesus.